hi everyone welcome back to my page welcome back to my channel thank you for subscribing to my youtube page at dr kiruka bridget at obgyn talks with dr adazion thank you for following me on facebook at obgyn talks with dr adazion i'm also on tiktok and on instagram with the same name please if you have not subscribed do where to subscribe now hit the notification button thank you I'm back again today we'll be discussing about male infertility as it contributes to infertility as a whole we have discussed infertility before if you have not watched the video please look for it scroll down you will see the video and watch we'll be taking male infertility as a whole infertility as we've said before is defined as inability of couples to achieve pregnancy after one year of unprotected adequate sexual intercourse now we did we divided the contributory factor to infertility into some groups we said the male factor contributes about 30 to 40 percent of infertility that the female factor contributes about 30 to 40 percent of infertility we now agree that 10 to 20 percent is contributed by the combined both male and female factor i will now say that five to ten percent of infertilities are unexplained so male factor infertility is what we're we'll talking about today we know that uh, seminal fluid analysis, that is test for checking the, male, the sperm, call it seminal fluid analysis. Seminal fluid analysis is the most important determinant of male factor infertility. If the test is done and it is normal, the, the, the man is said to not be the cause of that infertility. Seminal fluid analysis helps to find out the number of the sperm cells present, the shape of the sperm cells present, and the motility of the sperm cell present. What is their number? Are they adequate enough to fertilize an egg? And what is the shape? Are they double-headed? Are they single-headed? Are they okay? Do they look stunted or do they look normal? And then the motility. Are they forward forwardly moving or are they backwardly moving or are they just moving in a circle all these things are what seminal fluid analysis found out including other things other things can also be found out using seminal fluid analysis however the three most important is the one i just mentioned now how is this sample collected how is the man advised and counseled for seminal fluid analysis if a man comes for infertility checkup and want to take the a seminar fluid for sampling what we do we can say her can say him rather on what to be done he's expected to abstain from social intercourse at least three to five days so when he's abstained from every form of social intercourse that will lead to ejaculation now when that when he has uh, abstained from social intercourse he's given a wide mouthed jar to collect the specimen the specimen is collected through masturbation that's the best way to collect it because with this it is not contaminated with anything everything that comes out comes into that jar however if it's difficult for such a person to get the, the seminal fluid through masturbation we can cancel them on coitus interruptus using a non-spermicidal latex condom whatever that is collected there can be put inside the jar it has its own limitation those that are that can it can be able to collect those that can collect through a uh, seminar through coaches interruptus we also tell them to do it and tell them how to do it but the best is through masturbation now when the sperm is collected when the seminal fluid is collected is expected to be delivered to the laboratory within 30 minutes of collection so, because liquefaction time is said to start from 30 minutes. So, whenever it's collected, it should be sent before 30 minutes into the laboratory that will analyze it. And what, is, what are the normal sperm parameters? What are the normal seminal fluid analysis parameters? Seminal fluid analysis parameters, the volume is expected to be at least 1.5 mil. Remember that abstinence is for 3 to 5 days. So, the volume is expected to be at least 1.5 mil. The liquefaction time is said to start at 30 minutes. Now, the pH is said to be between 7.2 to 7.8. The sperm concentration should be at least 15 million per meal. The total sperm count should be at least 39 million per ejaculate, per the total content that is ejaculated into that container. Now, the motility 
is expected that it should be 40 percent more time total motility total motility should be 40 percent at least 40 percent of the spam seen should be moving now progressive motility those that are moving forward should be at least 32 percent i'm giving the least values acceptable by who world health organization the morphology should be for at least 4% normal. It's a strict criteria. 4% normal is the morphology. Now, the white blood cell count in that seminal fluid ejaculate should be less than 1 million per meal. So, we are not expected to see high more than 1 million WBC count. That's white blood cell count in that ejaculate in per meal. Now, other things can be checked. If you are suspecting sexually transmitted infection or in the infection in the semen, you can do culture and sensitivity. When culture is done, it can pick the organism that is seen in that ejaculate and the sensitivity to the drugs which is seen will be used to treat the person. What are the causes of low spam count? Causes of low spam, spam count can be grouped into genetics, past surgery, general health, and sexually transmitted infection. There, for genetics, there are some abnormalities in the chromosome that are associated with low sperm count. Now, for past surgeries, those that have had scrotal surgeries, surgeries in the scrotum that might have affected the vas deferens or the dots, the person may have issues with the sperm concentrations or the sperm volume. Now, for general health, there are some health conditions. There are, in fact, it has been seen, studies have been done and found out that Obese persons may produce low sperm count. So, her general health of the individual contributes to low sperm count. Now, the next thing is sexually transmitted infections. For those that have sexually transmitted infection, it can lead to reduced sperm quality, including the motility and even the morphology. So, if these are found, they are treated. Now, what is the treatment options for low sperm count? The treatment options include can be surgery. Now, for someone that has been examined, for a man that has been examined and found to have what we call varicocele in the scrotum, it's found out during the examination, physical examination of the scrotum. The uh, doctor may find out that this person has varicocele and the treatment option is for varicocelectomy. When the varicocelectomy is done, the person will go on to have normal sperm count and impregnant and fertilized egg and have his own baby. Drugs. Medications can be used if the reason for the low sperm count is found, for example, that it's from sexually transmitted infections. Antibiotics can be used for depending on the organism cultured and the sensitivity. If we suspect just pelvic inflammatory disease, we can go on to give broad spectrum antibiotics for that, for what we think. This should be at the discretion of the doctor. Now, medications and counseling. For someone that is obese, you can cancel the person on what to do. Modification of lifestyle, use of vitamins, and so on. Now, for those that are with that, they are, the reason for their low sperm count is because of abnormal hormones in their level. Hormonal treatment can be done. There are some people you will see, and it's the result of one hormone or the other. The doctor will give the person hormonal drugs to correct it. And you'll find out that someone that has low sperm count has repeat tests shows normal sperm count and the next thing the person is carrying his baby what are the lifestyle modifications to increase and improve the sperm quality someone that is obese we can sell the person on to lose weight the ability to lose weight is very very necessary if we find out a man that is obese not only women that will cancel to lose weight if a man is obese with body mass index greater than 30 we can sell him to lose weight with weight reduction exercise dietary modification and the weight is reduced the person will go on to have a normal sperm uh, parameters now for those that for others for others we can sell them to take vitamins especially in form of fruits and vegetable vitamin supplements can be given it depends on the discretion of the doctor now another uh, other counseling we give the the person that will suspect is lifestyle modification that is lifestyle that is affecting her, his sperm uh, quality is to avoid heavy drinking heavy drinking can affect heavy drinking of alcohol can affect the sperm 
parameters and to avoid smoking and hard drugs. These are detrimental to the spam quality. Now, for others, for men generally, we we'll tell them to wear loose cutting boxers. It's not time to start wearing pants. The scrotum is outside. It's not expected to be in a place that is hot. The environment is not supposed to be hot. Environment is supposed to be at the room temperature. So don't expose this, this, this scrotum and the testes where the sperm is formed to a hot environment by wearing tight uh, nylon pants. No, we advocate for loose cutting boxers. Now, I will mention some names of abnormal sperm conditions and what they mean. These include aspemia. Aspemia. Aspemia means there is no seminal fluid in the ejaculate. Oh. Means total lack of ejaculate at all. There is no seminal fluid at all. Aspemia. Now, hypospemia means when there is reduced seminal volume. The ejaculate, remember I said, should be at least 1.5 mil. So when there is reduced seminal volume, it is known as hypospemia. Now, there are um, oligospemia. When there is reduced number of spermatozoa in the seminal fluid, it reduced number, this is what we call low sperm count, the normal low sperm count, you know. So oligospemia, reduced number of spermatozoa in the semen. Now, azospemia means there is no sperm in the semen ejaculated. The ejaculate, you watch it, and there is no sperm seen at all. Teratospemia means increased number of abnormal morphology. Increased number of abnormal morphology. The morphology of the sperm cells are not good. Remember, we said the morphology should be at least 4%. Now, astenozospemia. Astenozospemia, when there is reduced sperm motility. There can be a combination of oligospemia, astenozospemia, and teratospemia. So this is known as OAT syndrome. So if, this, if the trouble or the cause is found, treatment can be ensued and the person will go on to have his normal sperm count and go on to fertilize the egg and have the baby and infertility is treated. So, so appropriate health seeking behavior and lifestyle modification, including use of medication where necessary and surgery where implicated can help reduce low sperm count. Thank you for watching to this point. Thank you for following me. Thank you so much. If you have not subscribed, this is the point to subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook page. All at Obijoy Talks with Dr. Ada Zion. Thank you for watching. See you next time for another enriching episode. God bless you.